All right, hey everybody, so welcome to another After We Fell movie video. So tonight I went to the second night of the two-night U.S. event of After We Fell. Now, when I originally reviewed After We Fell, I gave it an A-, minus, but let's be honest, a, a B plus with a big fat asterisk. So after a second viewing, am I still as high, or have I come down a little? Well, let's get it out of the way. I'm still as high as ever, and I'm more firm than ever that After We Fell is the best film of the franchise, not just in terms of acting, writing, and technicals, but also when it comes to the book-to-film adaptations. How would I break down the films is this. Like, a lot of people might be wondering, Charles, how would you describe all the films in the After series when it comes to book-to-film adaptations? Well, After is an adaptation in name only. After We Collided is a... Let's just throw a bunch of fan favorite scenes into the film without understanding why they are fan favorites or with zero connectivity and with zero emotions. After We Fell, while it still is compacting an 836 page book into a 90 minute movie, it actually understands why the scenes they kept in are fan favorites. After We Fell is the first film in the franchise where I actually felt like the team behind the film actually understood the books. It's the first time I felt the same emotions I felt while reading the book. At this point, if you aren't satisfied with After We Fell, then I honestly don't know what you want at this point from one of these After adaptations. No matter how many times I see After We Fell, I'm never going to stop saying that this is Hero and Joe's best performances to date. Not just in the films, but careers as well. They are Hessa at this point. They are perfectly embodied Hessa. And it's going to be tough to see anyone else other than Hero and Joe as Hessa when it comes to the um, spinoffs. So this time, I wanted to bring up some of my favorite scenes. Let's start with the I love yous. I mean, whispering them into each other uh, over the phone, uh, Hart and Santa to Tessa on the car ride to the cabin. Another scene that I really enjoyed was the club sequence, even though we were still missing the car sex, which I will get to in a little bit. Um, Hart and saying there's a difference between loving someone and not being able to live without them. And the reason why I really did love that line, or especially the fact that I actually included that line, is because one of the things that we heard with After We Collided is that um, Landon's line, the line that we, like, we all wanted, you know, just because he doesn't, just because he lo doesn't love you the way that you want him to doesn't mean he doesn't love you with everything that he has. The thing that we kept hearing over and over again is that it's too cringy. It doesn't work. Well, guess what? After We Fell included a similar line, and guess what? It worked perfectly. A hero knocked it out of the park, so I do not know why they cut Landon's line from After We Collided. Um, another scene that I really did love, or especially the first part of this scene, uh, I did kind of laugh when Harden, uh, just like grabs the bat, uh, when he first comes back to the apartment and sees the door opened, uh, where he just like grabs the bat and he's like slowly, slowly moving through the apartment. And of course that scene then turned into, into my heart breaking when he finds Richard, um, laying there having a relapse and, the big thing that I really did love about this moment is that it's just the expression on Hero's face. His face, his expressions say everything. And that's um, that Harden seeing Richard and realizing that this is his future if he doesn't clean himself up. Another scene that I'll just like, you know, encapsulate with like uh, just like a blanket. Any of the scenes with Harden and Vance, Stephen and Hero killed those scenes. And and um, and Stephen Moyer showed why he should have been Vance from the very beginning. Now, I did miss the moment from the book where when Harden comes to surprise Tessa in Seattle, of course, Tessa, you know, in her socks goes slipping and sliding across the floor. But I but the but the movie more than made up for that by having the moment where when Tessa jumps into his arms that she's like literally clutching him so, so hard and does not want to let go that he literally, you know, just like moves along with her and then literally just like bends over to pick up the luggage with Tessa still in his arms. Um, another thing that I uh, really did enjoy, or that's kind of brought me to tears, and again, it is Hero's performance, 
uh, is the scene uh, where Harden discovers Vance and Trish in the kitchen. And again, I, I said this in the other video, I'm going to say it here. This really is book fighter Harden, because like one of the things I've been trying to drill into people's heads is that when it comes to fighting, Harden is not just like a one punch and then sad panda and, and run away. Harden's going to keep punching, going to keep kicking, going to keep fighting until somebody literally has to physically restrain him. And just that, that guttural, that, Rah! I mean, that, that, that hero lets out uh, when he lunges again for Vance as he's being held back, uh, it, it broke my heart. And then, and then triply, quadruply broke my heart. Uh, when, when Harden and Tessa are in the room and Harden just like breaks down, like he just literally just like collapses while gripping on to Tessa. Um, another scene that I really did love was them quoting uh, Pride and Prejudice to each other on the boat. Uh, one of the things I did love about this film is that Harden is comedic. Like Harden does have like some great one-liners. He actually does have like some funny moments in the books and it feels like the films have really not, you know, captured that yet up until this point, but um but Harden actually, you know, got a couple of laughs out of me. Like the big one being when he called the bartender a snitch. Like I actually did kind of like really chuckle at that. Um another soft moment that I really did enjoy uh, was the soft moment we got from Hessa in the hot tub, just talking and looking up at the stars. Um, another scene that even though I do have my problems with this scene, and I will talk about it in, in, a, in a little bit, uh, the doctor scene. I mean, I thought that Joe just knocked that scene out of the park, and she is, like, so heartbreaking. When Tessa is standing there at the mirror, I mean, like, literally, like, like touching her stomach uh, as she's looking at herself in the mirror, and it's just, like, heartbreaking to watch. Um... Another scene that just like completely broke my heart was the uh, was the kitchen fight between Harden and Tessa, where Tessa does have the line, um, you know, if I'm not an, you know if I'm not enough, then that's your problem. I mean, again, Joe just knocked that out of the park. Uh, another great comedic moment, uh, which could have been a little uh, a little nod to uh, Chance's role in the Sabrina Netflix TV show is when Harding comes walking up to them like in the college campus uh scene and he and 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 uh Landon goes you know not today Satan uh Chance has actually you know winked in a nod and actually confirmed that that was a little wink and a nod to uh the show Sabrina that he was on on Netflix uh talking about you know Chance and like the supporting cast the supporting cast is still top notch Every single person from Hero and Joe on down, each perfectly embodied their characters. And honestly, for a lot of this, I wish that this would have been our cast from day one. I mean, I love our original cast. I love I love Shane as Landon, and I, I would not want to lose Shane for all the money in the world. But I mean, if anybody had to, you know, kind of like take the ball and run with it, I really am happy that we did get um, Chance Paradomo as Landon. I'll say it again, when you cast people because of their talent and not their follower counts, you get quality top-notch performances. Now, something that someone was pointing out recently, uh, that I, I think that they really did nail it, when they said that After We Fell is the first one of these to not feel like a standalone movie. Now, before anybody starts, you know, jumping down to the comments and screaming their heads off at me for that, I know that after we collided ended on a cliffhanger, but it still by and large felt like a, a standalone movie and not a piece in a fully connected story. And we know that after, and, and again, going back to that first movie, we know that after was a billion, trillion, quadrillion times infinity, a standalone movie. And anybody who says otherwise is lying to either you or themselves. When it comes to the books, when it comes to the after series of, of books, the books were never standalone books, but all pieces in the puzzle that is the after mythology. And you wouldn't get all the answers, but would have them once you read the full story. And so that's why I wanted to bring up the doctor scene and pretty much say that, you know what, uh, I'm still on some level critiquing that doctor scene, especially because like they, they never bring it up again where Tessa finds out that she 
uh, cannot have kids. They, ne they never bring it up again. But the reason why I'm moving off of that critique, at least for now, is because of what I just said. Because it's clear that this is not a standalone movie. So you're not going to get everything in this movie. So even though that is still a little bit of a critique that I do have, I am moving off of, you know, completely, you know, saying like, oh, this brings us down a whole bunch of letter grades. And I will say that this movie is now an A- minus for now. While I wait to see what happens with After Ever Happy, to really add to the fact that this isn't a standalone movie is the fact that it ends with the words to be continued. None of these films have actually done that up to this point. Now, one of the things that the fandom has brought up a, a few times, especially because we were actually teased with the car sex scene uh, after the club, because like we really were teased about getting that. So a lot of the fans were like really disappointed that we did not get that. Um, and honestly, where I come down on that is this. I'm honestly glad that they held that for After Ever Happy because if that came that close to the doctor scene, I would have been way lower on this movie because, I mean, just dealing with the club was enough to, you know, kind of, you know, put me on edge a little bit. You know, just having, like, the club scene, like, so close to, you know, Tessa finding out that she can't have kids. I think that the car sex scene, unless they really, really, really played that perfectly, that would have brought down my grades a lot lower than a B plus. I think I would have been, like, in D minus territory on that first viewing, and I would have been a lot lower if they actually did include the car sex scene. Now, something that I will still critique, no matter what, I mean, unless we, you know, get the extended cut or whatever, uh, is that Mira Sorvino and Francis Turner were really underutilized in this movie. Now, we know that 20 minutes were taken out, and Mira Sorvino and Francis Turner really do feel the most affected when it comes to that 20 minutes. Now, talking about that cut 20 minutes for a second, when it comes to the other movies in the franchise, I was playing editor with the theatrical cut and the deleted scenes. The truth is, is that once a studio mandates a 90 minute movie, if you want a deleted scene that you see like on the deleted scenes to go into the movie, then you have to be willing to edit out a scene from the theatrical cut to replace it with. And honestly, for the first time, I can think, I can't, I, for the first time, I can't honestly think of a single scene in the theatrical cut of After We Fell that I would take out. I honestly cannot think of a single scene. Even the doctor scene, I wouldn't even remove that. I would just add in some more moments, you know, to actually deal with it. I'm more than likely going to just watch the deleted scenes and go, yeah, just make a fucking longer movie. There was no reason why this movie should have been 90 minutes in and out. Like, you should have just made a, a longer movie. The director wanted a longer movie. The director, you know, uh, you know, uh, like, that's the cut that she delivered, like, that 20 minutes longer. So it's like, no, give the director what she wants. I'm always going to side with the artist when it comes to this. Overall, I love this movie. To me, it is the best representation of the books that we've gotten so far. I legit don't know how anyone can prop up the first two movies and hold them up as like, you know, like the, the topper echelon when it comes to the after film adaptations, but then start tearing down after we fell. It's the first one of these that made me cry, not just because of the performances. It's the first one that had strong performances from every single person. There was not a single bum performance in this entire film. It's the first one that had me hyped for the next one. It's the first one that seemed to get the material it was ad adapting. Was it perfect? Did it become a six hour film and get every single detail? No, but it's still the best, most accurate representation of an after book adaptation we've gotten so far. And that's enough for me to continue to hype this movie, love this movie, geek out over this movie, and give it a glowing review and an A minus. So jump down to the comment section below. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your continued love and support. As always, remember, if you like what you see here and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's go through all the stuff you'll be able to find on this channel right now. So I'll be bringing you guys constant, constant, constant updates 
on after we fell and after we're happy. You guys are going to be so updated that you'll be begging me to stop the updates. Because I was terminated for so long, there's still some stuff from after we collided that I do have to catch up on, including topic videos, and those are coming sooner rather than later. As always, remember, this channel would not be able to grow to the heights it has without you guys, and so for that, I'm eternally grateful. You know and I know there are plenty of fans out there, old and new, who have no idea, absolutely no idea that this channel exists, so please keep sharing the channel. Please keep spreading the word of Charles's movie channel, because this will easily be one of the best, if not the best, after series channels that you'll find right here on YouTube or dare I say anywhere. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Keep liking, keep subscribing, keep sharing. My name is Charles. Welcome to the After Series channel. I'll see you later. After fans, Joe fans, hero fans, take care y'all. Love you.